this video we will uh, look at a slightly more general way of um, defining problems through recursion. Uh, we will for the lack of a better name I will call it just two way recursion. Uh, these are problems which are solved uh, by calling two sub instances. So, this is the uh, picture of a family tree and we will see that the call stack uh, for a two way recursive functions looks somewhat similar to a family tree. Let us revisit a problem that we have seen uh, which is to find the maximum value in an integer array. Uh, we saw that the stack depth uh, in our earlier solution was order n, because each problem of size n called one sub problem of size n minus 1. Now, can we reduce the depth of the stack from something uh, s close to n to something smaller than that. Okay. So, here is an alternate way to look at the problem, uh, which can be described in a very simple way. Instead of looking at uh, the maximum of the first element and then the tail, what I can do is take an array of size n and split it roughly into half. So, there is uh, a left half and a right half each of size n over 2. Now, imagine that you have the solution for the greatest element in the first half, let us call that x and imagine that you have the greatest element of the right half let us call that y. Now, whichever is greater among x and y is going to be the greatest in the whole array and this is the idea that we are going to implement right now. So, divide the array into about two equal halves the first half a 0 to a n by 2 minus 1 this contains n by 2 elements and the second half is a n by 2 so on up to n minus 1 this is the right half. Now, recursively find the maximum element of each half uh, and let us say that you have x which is the maximum in the left half and y which is the maximum in the right half. Then you just return the larger of x and y that should be the largest element of the array. While doing this we have to take care of the base cases uh, this is as before for the linear case when n is 1 then the only element in the array is the maximum element. So, return a of 0 if n is 0 that is the array is empty you return minus infinity. So, let us consider a concrete array a is an integer array with these elements. Okay. Just to remind you the linear version was done as follows if n is 0 you return something like minus infinity a very large negative value. Now, if n is 1 you return a of 0 which is the only element in the array otherwise you have at least two elements and earlier what we did was you call the sub problem a plus 1. So, the array which starts with the second element in the array and now the sub problem has n minus 1 elements because you are considering a 0 the first element as a separate thing. Now, what you wanted to return was maximum of whatever was returned in the sub problem. So, let that be some max val and whichever is greater a 0 and max val that is going to be the greatest element in the array. Now, we saw that the stack depth for this problem was n, because e, uh, a size n uh, problem is being reduced to a size n minus 1 uh, problem. Okay, so, in each step we are reducing the size of the problem by 1 and increasing the stack depth by 1. So, in total the stack depth would be n, because there will be about uh, n calls or n minus 1 calls however you want to count. Now, let us look at the two way recursive version. So, here is the algorithm that we discussed and let us just code this up. So, we will have int max array and then uh, int a which is the array containing n elements. And let us say that we have some constant minus infinity which we have defined elsewhere in the program later we will see how to do this. Uh, let us say that if n is equal to 0 you return minus infinity some large number uh, some large negative value and if n is equal to 1 you return the only value in the array. So, these are the base cases as before the change is here if 
you have at least two elements then you return maximum of the values returned by the two sub problems. What are the two sub problems? The first is the left half of the array which starts from A that is the, ad, uh, the first location in the array and contains n upon two elements. Then we need to compute the maximum of the right half. How do we find the right half? So, we need to skip n upon two elements which went to the left half to get to the first index in the right half. So, we do that by saying a plus n upon 2. If a is the address of the first location of the whole array, then a plus n upon 2 is going to be the first address of the first location of the right half. And how many elements does the right half contain? n upon 2 elements went to the left. Therefore, what we are left with is n minus n upon 2. Okay. So, notice how we call the left half. Uh, starting from A and containing n upon 2 elements and the right half which is starting from A plus n upon 2 and containing n minus n upon 2 elements. Now, let us examine whether this is better than the previous uh, recursive call where we reduced a problem of size n to a problem of size n upon 2. It was called linear recursion because we called one sub problem in order to solve the whole problem. Here we have we are roughly dividing it into halves and then calling two version two sub problems each of size about n upon 2. Now, surprisingly we will see that there is a huge improvement if you do this and this is one of the most elementary tricks in computer science it is called uh, divide and conquer okay. and here is a very simple example of that. Okay, so, if we look at the uh, concrete array that we had and we call max array a comma 8 because this contains 8 elements. Now, we say that it will recursively call two sub problems which is maximum max array a comma 4. So, that will be the first 4 elements starting from a 0 and then max array a plus 4 comma 4 which are the 4 elements starting from a 4 which is the fifth element in the array. Now, let us just look at the stack. Now, uh, notice what I have repeatedly mentioned which is that in order to think about a recursive problem, you just think about the formulation of the problem and then what you have to convince yourself is if I so solve the sub problems correctly, then I will get the correct solution to the main problem. So, I will have I will uh, divide my work into two sub problems. So, both of them will report their results back to me and now what I have to do is to figure out how do I put these two solutions together in order to solve the whole sub problem. So, think about it uh, in terms of the design of the algorithm and not about the execution stack, but we will uh, show why this is a major improvement over the linear recursion version of the same solution by looking at the stack. So, let us just look at the stack max array a comma 8 calls max array a comma 4. Now, the way function calls in C works uh, you will go to the second half of this uh, problem which is a plus 4 comma 4 only after max array a comma 4 is completely done right. So, let us now see how max a comma 4 will execute. It has two sub problems again and let us look at the first sub problem which is max array a comma 2. That itself has a sub problem max array a comma 1. In order to abbreviate I will just uh, put a dot there, but that dot is supposed to signify max r. Okay. Now, once you have solved this suppose uh, this is a base case. Now, uh, it contains only one element. So, the only element is the maximum. So, it returns that value to max array a comma 2 that is one of the sub problems for max array a comma 2. So, now this max array a comma 2 calls the second sub problem that it has which is max array a plus 1 comma 1. Again it is a base case it contains only one element that single element is the greatest element in that. So, you have two values now one coming from the left and one coming from the right and you just compare these two values and 
that will be the greatest value in the first two elements of the array. Okay. So, once you do this you return and when you return you get the value of max array a comma 2. So, suppose all of that happens and then you return to max array a comma 4. At this point this uh, function will call its second component which is max array a plus 2 comma 2 and the recursion continues. Okay. So, as soon as um, a function returns its stack will be erased I am showing that by dimming out uh, that particular function call okay. and this proceeds. So, once this value is obtained you can return to max array a plus 2 comma 2. Now, this function is finished because it has called both its sub problems. So, this will return and this problem has returned uh, has finished with both its sub problems. So, you will after this function is done you will eventually unwind all the way back up to the top and now you are ready to call the second sub problem of max array a comma 8 which is max array a plus 4 comma 4 okay. and you do it similarly. Now, one thing you can notice here is that at any point the active path the what what are active on the stack the functions which have not yet returned are the highlighted entries in the uh, call tree. Okay. So, for example, uh, at the very end the call stack contains four functions okay, before you eventually return and compute the last uh, compute the maximum of the whole array. The worst case depth of the stack is 4 okay. uh, and we had 8 elements. So, you would think that uh, based on this experience that the depth of the stack is about n over 2, but if you think more carefully about it what happens is that at every sub problem at every level I am dividing the problem by 2. Okay. So, the depth of the stack is the maximum length uh, path in this tree and at every step of the tree I am dividing the problem by 2 how many times do I have to divide n by 2 in order to reach 1 that will be the depth of the tree. Equivalently you can think about how many times do I have to double in order to reach n if I start from 1 that is the bottom up way. So, if I start from 1 and I double every level how many times do I have to double in order to reach n okay. that is the solution to the equation. Uh, 2 to the x equal to n. So, what I have to find is how many times do I have to double. So, how many times do I have to multiply 2 with itself in order to reach n and you will see that the solution is uh, log n to the base 2. Okay. So, this is going to be the height of the uh, call graph or the call tree. Okay. So, the stack depth here is about 1 plus log n that is approximately correct um, which is a huge improvement over n. Okay. If you think of n as something like 1024 which is 2 to the 10 we are saying that the stack depth is about 10. Notice that in the linear case we would have a stack depth of about 1024 instead we are doing about 10. So, this is a huge improvement in the case of stack depth. So, with a very simple idea which is instead of solving uh, one sub problem of size n minus 1 what if you split it into two halves roughly about size n by 2 you will see that you get a huge improvement in the stack depth. This is one of the simple ideas that we repeatedly use in computer science. Now, there are standard arithmetic functions also which can be con uh, defined in terms of the um, two way recursion uh, a very classic example is Fibonacci numbers. So, for example, uh, they are defined as f 0 equal to 1 f 1 equal to 1 and for n greater than or equal to 2 they are defined as f n equal to f n minus 1 plus f n minus 2. So, if we code this up it is a very simple function int uh, fib int n if n is 0 or n is 1 you return 1 
otherwise you return Fibonacci. So, Fib of n minus 2 plus Fib of n minus 1. So, here is a very simple arithmetic sequence which is defined in terms of a two way recursion. So, this is a very simple way to write it, but it is a very inefficient way to do it. So, we will see why it is inefficient in a moment. If you just think of how you trace the function in the case of a letter uh, um, of a concrete uh, Fibonacci number, let us say we want to calculate the fifth Fibonacci number. Now, that depends on Fib 4 and Fib 3, Fib 4 depends on Fib 3 and Fib 2. Fib 3 depends on Fib 2 and Fib 1 and so on. So, this is the call graph that you will have, the call tree that you will have if uh, uh, you consider the calculation of Fibonacci 5. Now, what is the problem here? You will see that many computations are unnecessarily done multiple times. So, if you look at Fibonacci 2 uh, in the call graph, it is evaluated multiple times. So, Fibonacci 2 is evaluated when Fib 3 is called it is also called when Fib 4 is called and Fib 3 is called uh, in a different context when you want to calculate Fib 5 even there Fib 2 is called. Okay. So, you will see that Fib 3 is called 2 times, Fib 2 is called 3 times and Fib, 4, Fib 1 is called uh, 5 times and so on. So, we are unnecessarily repeating the work uh, and there are tricks in computer science to alleviate to remove this kind of unnecessary work. But that is strictly, uh, it is not an idea that strictly falls into the concept of recursion uh, and it is slightly outside the scope of this course. So, we will not cover this in this course, but I just want to point out that even though it is natural to consider this arithmetic sequence in terms of two way recursion, it may not be the most efficient way to do it.